Just like with restoring an old house or a car or a boat, you're never really sure what you're going to get into until you start taking things apart. Since March of this year, uh, 1225 has been off of the wheels. The wheel parts have all been uh, trucked down here to Chattanooga. And so it's been on uh, jack stands, it's back in Owasso. Really, we've been meaning to do it for a very long time. We've been wanting to do more extensive work the way the railroads would have done on a regular basis back in the 1940s and 50s with steam. This year in 2022, we had the opportunity to fund it, to do the work, and to hire FMW, uh, who have restored several other steam locomotives in a similar manner to get this done. Well, we started out as a student club at Michigan State University. What nobody told us was that the only steam locomotive we had was pretty heavily worn out. So in the 50 years since then that we've been working with the locomotive, we've been running out the last miles on the work that was done when it was last overhauled in 1948. In the last years, it became clear that we were running up against the very limits of the wear that was left in the engine's moving parts. The engine has hundreds and hundreds of, of wearing surfaces that, that use themselves up as it goes down the track. And most critically, especially, the, the engine's wheels were getting close to wearing out to the point where they could no longer be used. We, we found a few of the main uh, crown brasses that supports the driving axles. There were four of those that had cracks in them that needed to be addressed. We couldn't have seen that until all these parts were taken apart. Uh, some of the, the linkages and the, the rigging had some poles that had become out of shape or out of round that needed uh, metal added back and then new bushings uh, replaced. Uh, so those kind of things you really don't understand until you've taken everything apart, inspected it, and you get a better idea of what, what the scope of work is then from that point. So here we're boring out one of the 1225 spring swords, which we had found uh, the majority were out around, of course needed new bushings. Uh, we did have to do a little bit of weld repair and then bore some new holes. Uh, this one here is on its final pass. Uh, we're having a custom bushing made that'll be installed. Uh, and that's the case with just about all of the spring rigging components. This particular component, the sword, it actually goes up through the ends of each leaf spring. And this is what transfers essentially the the, the, the weight of the locomotive through the frame, through the spring rigging, and into the box, through the axle to the wheel. So this part, needless to say, is very important. And all of them have to hold their load and hold do their share. And they say, you know, it's only as strong as the weakest link. Well, in this case, this is a link, and we want to make sure that it's strong and it's able to do its job, because that all these components are working together to ensure that this thing is uh, riding smoothly and doing the job properly. So here we're machining a new bushing uh, for the 1225 spring rigging components. We're actually doing this bushing, machining the OD and ID to be a press fit in the particular hangers, swords, and other components of the spring rigging. And the reason this is necessary is that it provides a renewable part so that the material in the pin is not wearing through the actual sword, hanger, and other spring rigging components. And this will actually be hardened once this is machined to tolerance, a press fit into, into the components. Uh, but they're hardened so that uh, they will, the longevity and wear uh, will be um, prolonged. So uh, this is something that uh, this locomotive has not had done and since probably about 1949. So this is something where this thing should uh, be good to go for, for many, many years and generations to come. So here we've got the 1225 rods, and each of these rods has been inspected. Uh, we did a wet mag particle inspection uh, to ensure there was no cracks, defects, subsurface or surface. Uh, and then what we did was actually measured in between all of the bores, from bore to bore on each of these rods. And the reason that's important is that that distance has to be maintained to be able to allow for the axles to be perfectly spaced. If they're not, if they're too short or too far apart, then it's going to cause a binding movement. So what we did is double check that. There was a couple small corrections we had to make, nothing major. Uh, we bored all of these rods. And then we also took the, what they call a knuckle pin, which basically connects the front rod to what they call the intermediate rod. And uh, what we had to do is essentially just kind of lap the fit in, because it's a tapered pin, essentially. 
and the the, the, the front end of the uh, connect or the intermediate rod would fit in here. Pin would connect these two together. Um, so we checked the fits on those. We had to make new bushings have already been pressed into the uh, intermediate rods as well as new floating bushings after the knuckle pins were trued, uh, lapped in. So now that the rods are all machine true and honed, so from center to center to center to center, so the, so the spacing is correct. And um, you know, that's something that was, was typically done uh, and it's something that, that we did here just to make sure that this thing will uh, be a, a good riding, uh, long lasting locomotive. So these are the knuckle pins for 1225. And as you can see, we've turned these journal surfaces nice and true. And we've also lapped these two tapered fit pieces in. Now, what we found is, is that the, the, the bushings were also out. So you have a pressed in bushing steel uh, that's in stalled in the intermediate rod. But then you also have this bushing here. And basically what it does is it floats and it's allowed to, as things move, it, it can, it can uh, essentially float. And it's lubricated with soft grease. This is one of the new steel bushings uh, for the 1225 main rods. And basically what this bushing does, it, it, it presses in to the big end of the main rod. And there is a bronze floating bushing between this idea of this bushing and the crank pin. And the, the fit, the interference fit to the main rod, this thing has got tandem rods, is on the outer ends on both the inside and outside end. The center is actually where the rear side rod uh, rides and it will have a bronze bushing essentially pressed into the rod. So that's where uh, it transfers the motion from the main rod to the number four uh, driving wheel. So right now we're set up, we've got the rods machined and we're doing a final hone on the inside just to make sure they're nice and polished. This is the end of the, the big end of the main rod and basically you can see where it's split apart. You have two pieces and your rear uh, side rod is, goes into this area here and the, the steel pressed in bushings, this is the fit where they will press into. So the driving boxes basically are where the axle for each of the main driving wheels rides. So picture an axle in this area here and basically there's two per axle. You have one on the right side, one on the left side. So there's a total of eight boxes here for four axles. This is what transfers all the weight from the axle or onto the axle from the locomotive. So you have the spring rigging that we talked about actually is connected via a saddle and the, each leaf spring rides above it. And that's transferring all the weight of the locomotive to basically each one of these boxes, which is then therefore transferring the weight onto the axle and then to the wheel to the rail. Here we have the driving boxes for 1225. Uh, we actually found four of the crown brasses that had some pretty significant cracks and it appears to be because of heat. But uh, we've got those pressed out. We have new crown brasses on order. Uh, hopefully we'll have those soon and we can do the machining work to them and have them fit to the boxes. Um, we've also removed the hubs, which the hubs take the lateral force from the wheel to the box. Uh, they've all been removed and we have new hubs that are here. Uh, we'll be machining them. Uh, we'll begin on that later this week and start putting these uh, hubs installed to the boxes. The remaining boxes that we uh, were able to salvage the, the crown brass um, is that we're going to do a, a conversion to oil uh, and, uh, on this locomotive. So what we're going to do is actually apply Babbitt uh, to, to, to the crown brasses for a couple different reasons. Uh, number one is that um, it, it, it maintains the thickness of the original crown brass and uh, we don't have to, since we've turned the journals and we've essentially made the journals smaller, uh, we don't have to go up and bore up into the crown brass so that we're making it too thin on the top. Number two is that Babbitt uh, retains lubricant much better, in particular oil, uh, as well as um, it, it is more forgiving in case there is any sort of trash or uh, any contaminants that could potentially work their way in the box. It'll actually embed itself into the Babbitt and keep from scoring or damaging the axle uh, in the journal surface. So just like the firebox replacement in 2009, uh, we don't expect to do anything that major to the boiler in our lifetimes for, for the next 30 or 40 years. We'll just have to do the the standard 15-year tube and flue replacement. Likewise, with the running gear, 
Uh, we fully expect uh, that this work that FMW is doing and what we reassemble uh, in Owasso should make the engine uh, perfectly capable of running for several generations to come. Some interesting opportunities on the horizon uh, for events and trips both on our site and off. We're going to be very excited to see it up and running in steam again and out on the rail network. And we hope to keep our group, our volunteers and staff uh, very busy in 2023 and 2024 as 1225 gets back on the rails and we continue to do work on our second steam locomotive, Chicago Northwestern 175.